This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about some news and notes as we head into this show. The observer would note that the plan for the former Mystico is to bring him right to the main roster, as opposed to having him spend time in FCW, learning the American style and English. Dave would say, I'm really surprised by this. The idea is that it costs so much to get him that they need to make him a valuable player as soon as possible. Whether this is short-sighted thinking or not will be viewed in hindsight. My impression is that he will have a new name and a newly designed mask and that they want to make sure the Mexican Americans and Mexicans know it is the former Mystico under the mask. I don't know that this is related to Mystico, but timing wise, I would bet it is as Jim Ross announced, they would be a major groundbreaking WWE news event on February 24th in Mexico city open to the public. This is a big deal. Mystico is regarded as the best wrestler in the entire country of Mexico. They think he's going to be the next Rey Mysterio. And, um, we know that. It's not going to go exactly as planned. Um, I think most of our, our listeners probably remember him as Sin Cara. And I don't know. It was a miss. Why do you think it was? Well, because they didn't ask anybody in America who we thought was the best Mexican wrestler in the world. Right. This guy came in with all this hype. And, and here, it was one of those times that, and it was discussed and, and true. You need a, a Mexican star. If you're going to run Mexico sure, or Spanish countries, yeah. Ray, Ray Mysterio was that guy and you don't replace Ray. There's nobody coming along. I hadn't seen anybody to this day. That's going to eclipse Ray Mysterio and all that he's accomplished, but sitting in the genius office, I'm mm -hmm. sure the conversation went like this. Okay. Ray's been hurt a couple of times. You know, he's too little anyway, even though he had proved it don't mean a damn thing, how big he is. Uh, you know, we got to get another Mexican star in here. Who you, know, who you got? What do you got? Well, this guy didn't show me anything. Mm. Not a damn thing. He had a bad attitude. Really? If he spoke English, he acted like he didn't. Now, we're not talking about Hunico, that that guy. We're talking about the original. Zinkara. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he just, he was one of those guys that flat brought just the Mexican style. That's what he brought to our product. Our product was not ready for that lack of contact, lack of selling, all those things, just the whirly bird stuff that had no psychology behind it. And I don't know, I, you know, I like Ray Mysterio because of several reasons. He is small, but he figured out a way to work his matches mm -hmm. where he used every bit of his body to knock you down or chip away at you and get you in a position that he could do a springboard or whatever it was and knock you down. So at the end of the day, he spent most of the match selling. He had one flurry that made sense that was able to get him almost to winning or winning, but in a way that made sense. None of that reasoning was in this guy's tool belt. You know, he thought he would just bounce guys around twice his size, very little selling, just pop up out of nowhere. Everything I'd been taught about this business and everything that the audience loves, the storytelling, the selling, the underdog, all that stuff was lost on him. But it came from the top. We had to have a star. So those of us that had these feelings and relayed these feelings just got heat, mm. just like everything else. When you point out the obvious to the brain trust, some places, they don't like the fact that it, once they hear it, they go, you know, that he's right. It's right. He's slapping me in the face with it. And I don't like it. I don't like the fact that he's slapping me in the face with it. When all you're doing is pointing out the obvious. 
Uh, and he was one of those guys and a funny story. We were over in, uh, uh, South, South Africa, last day of a tour. And this guy had heat with everybody. His selling was terrible. Everything was terrible. It was an afternoon show. The last day of the tour. Uh, I think we're in Cape town and for lunch that day catering before we left to come to the building, uh, I saw some beef in a bowl and scooped it up, had a pretty good portion. I was hungry, so I was eating fast. And all of a sudden, I went, it's got a wang to it. I called the guy over. I go, sir, this, I mean, is this beef cooked all the way? He said, that's not beef. That's ostrich. Oh. You had ostrich before? I have not. Well, that will... Unless it was just me being a Southern boy who eats chicken and beef and pork chops, I got sick as a dog. And you talking about food poisoning? I mean sick. And I'll get to the point pretty, pretty quickly here. It's not about me being sick. It's about the fact that this guy was booked with Cody. Oh. Cody was one of the young guys that was trying to make his way in the business. And this dipshit made it difficult. And this is in previous matches every way he possibly could. And Cody was advanced enough. I thought to be able to deal with this guy who's not selling his stuff. That's just wanting to pop up, run high spots and all the bullshit. Well, now I'm, I can't even go to the curtain to watch the matches. I'm laying on a trainer's table with those hot pads on me, shaking, shivering, puking in a trash can, running back and forth to the toilet. I mean, ostrich sick. I got a really nice pair of white ostrich boots. Never occurred to me to eat them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, the shits. So I'm getting reports from the extra referee, and he went, I told Cody, I said, go, kid, it's the last day of the tour. Go out there and show him what we do. And I'm getting reports, and Cody beat the piss out of this guy and made him fight him, and all the high spots went away, and it turned into a real good scuffle. And I guess it was the best match that guy had had to that point and one of the best matches Cody had, but it was about a half-ass shoot. I missed every bit of it because we had to go straight to the airport, get on a plane, and fly 13 hours to Atlanta. Sick as a dog. But again, the only good match this guy, our, you know, because he was gone after that pretty quickly. So only decent match he must have ever had with our company, and I don't remember seeing it because I didn't see it. In so that was, era, were you guys recording house show matches just to review them later? No. Man, I wish that, I was close to that. That would have been great to see. Yeah, I mean, that didn't happen until much later. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.